Howdy CSers, this is Professor Kaufman and what follows is a brief demonstration of how to set up and install the remote editing capabilities that are within VS Code. Uh, the first thing that you'll need is to have VS Code installed. That is not something we'll go through in great detail, uh, but your best bet is to fire up a web browser uh, and search for VS Code. Uh, this is a uh, <laughs> short for VS uh, Visual Studio Code. It's a product by Microsoft, a fairly good text editor uh, with a variety of other capabilities. Usually, even if you misspell it, Google could find it for you, uh, find it here. And as you visit it, likely it will detect your operating system and suggest a download of one form or another. I'm running a Linux distribution right now, uh, so it's suggesting one of the several packages uh, associated with Linux. However, if you're on a Windows machine or a Mac machine, then what you'll see is a little bit different. Once you get VS Code installed, it's useful to add in several extensions that will enable you to access CSE Labs machines uh, on the University of Minnesota campus uh, with ease. Uh, I have installed VS Code previously, so I'm just going to fire it up here. Uh, my particular uh, UI here has a feature where you can punch a button and then type in a program you want to run. Here's Visual Studio Code. And I've eliminated a bunch of things, uh, cleaned out my all my extensions, uh, cleaned out various other things. So this is basically a clean install of that right now. Uh, typically, to use VS Code, you'd open up files, uh, perhaps open up a folder, and then navigate to files within that. Uh, I find VS Code a little bit too newfangled since I'm an old uh, hand at this point. For instance, it keeps bugging me to install various things that I don't really want to install. Uh, sometimes uh, that can be useful, but for now, we'll just ignore a bunch of that stuff. Uh, over on the left hand, these icons over here allow you to do various things, uh, version control, uh, but we'll be most interested first in the extensions over here. Uh, so we'll punch that button and what will pop up are some popular extensions along with a search box uh, that will allow you to search for extensions of interest. Now recommended down here is one that will probably uh, make use of uh, somewhere down here is the remote editing. Uh, but if it doesn't pop up right away, uh, I'll just punch in remote and what we've been looking for, and I'll maybe make this a little wider so we can read things, uh, is the remote uh, SSH and remote development in general. Uh, so I'm going to punch several of these and say install. Uh, so the remote SSH, yay. Uh, probably I don't need to edit configuration files too much, uh, but the remote development is definitely a go-to. Now, if you do this right, what should show up is in the lower left corner of your editing screen, down over here, uh, is a little green button then. And this will allow you to connect ro remotely from your machine that you're running locally, uh, probably a laptop, although maybe a desktop, and connect it to other machines, uh, notably those on the CSE lab systems. Uh, so there's no need to restart in this case. Uh, instead, I'm just going to punch the screen button, and this will open up a remote window. Uh, actually, I guess it'll uh, jump up here first uh, to connect to a host. Uh, I'm going to punch that and start punching in names uh, for things. Now you have to know machine names, and this will follow the same convention as SSHing uh, to machine names. Now, my preference is to punch in username and machine address uh, manually most of the time. So my X500 on the University of Minnesota systems is Kaufman. Uh, yours will probably involve some letters and uh, uh, numbers as well. So Kaufman, uh, an at, and this will be the machine name, oftentimes log into Atlas, uh, which is an oldie but a goodie. Uh, so it's atlas.cslabs.umn.edu. I'll punch enter now, and now we'll get that uh, new window where it's attempting to log in remotely. I'll have to give my password first, uh, so let me punch that in. Super secret uh, uh, X500 password. And in most cases, then, I'll get a prompt for dual authentication as well. Uh, so I'll punch one here because I want to push notification to go to my phone. I'll uh, press enter again. Um, my phone just buzzed because uh, Duo wants my attention, so I'll approve that. Uh, and at various times, this may go just slightly sideways, at which point you saw down over here there was a details button you could push. But uh, for me, this uh, went smashingly the very first try. 
Now I have over here is a terminal, uh, as in this is an SSH session into uh, the machine Atlas. So I can punch for instance Atlas and see here are the files that I have on the CSE Labs file system. What's nice is that beyond that though, uh, I can open up through this SSH connection uh, some GUI style stuff. Uh, so for instance, open a folder, uh, and if I scroll past all these little dot like hidden folders that are for configuration, uh, I believe I have a CSI 2021 folder over here. Uh, so I'll punch that, uh, push OK to open it. And then my left-hand side over here uh, may it will eventually open up. I guess here I'm getting prompted for another password. Uh, slightly annoying, but uh, no matter. I'll punch it in again. Four may get dual prompted again. Yep. Okay. Uh, so your mileage may vary here. And if you watch the advanced SSH tutorial, uh, you can actually on your own machine populate it with some keys that will prevent you from needing to punch in your password all the time. Uh, yeah, I trust myself. Uh, I'm the author uh, and the parent folder, uh, Kaufman. That's cool. Uh, and voila, down over here uh, we have stuff uh, that is files that are on that uh, um, the CC Labs machine. So now, uh, conveniently, I can just double click on this thing uh, and begin editing. Uh, importantly, as I'd want to uh, compile and run this program, I need a terminal on that machine. Uh, but that is not hard to spin up. Uh, so over here, if I punch a new terminal, now this will get me a terminal not on my local machine anymore, but on Atlas. And if I ls, you can see it's conveniently located in the CSI 2020 directory. Uh, so as I want to compile it, for instance, gcc this hello.c. Uh, and then can run it to see here are my dots uh, dot out. So I got my hi mom. Uh, maybe I want to say hi to my papa as well. Hi dad. Uh, so I'll up here note the little dot up here which indicates the file hasn't been saved. So I'll press Control S to save it. Uh, and if I GCC now and rerun that a dot out, so I'll see the hi dad over here. Uh, you notice over here uh, there's a zip file uh, that contains some lab code that needs to be extracted if you're working on, for instance, CSI 2021 stuff. Uh, I'm a command line person, uh, so I'd probably type uh, unzip uh, lab01 code.zip over here. And you'll see after just a moment, a new folder pops up over here uh, that I can expand and see, oh, here's a bunch of files that's associated with that lab, uh, so it can conveniently double click. Uh, now, importantly, you'll want to bear in mind that the little green thing over here indicates this is a remote connection. So all that we're doing and saving is on a different machine, uh, Machine Atlas, which is uh, part of the CEC Lab systems. It's not local to your computer. Uh, as soon as you quit, uh, those files aren't available on your local computer. However, VS Code provides a fairly uh, convenient mechanism to move things back and forth. Uh, so I have this full screen window over here uh, that is the remote connection. I'm just going to chuck this over to the side. Uh, and over here, uh, chuck my local session, uh, not remotely connected to anything right now. Uh, let me open up a folder. Uh, for instance, in my home directory, uh, I have a little uh, 2021 folder. And maybe I'll make a little, um, let's see, current work folder within that. And so uh, this is the one that I will open up. And yes, of course, of course, I trust myself for this. Uh, this is current work. Uh, maybe I want to copy things uh, from the remote machine uh, over here. Uh, and so once I get that hello.c program, it's as easy as a click and drag. Uh, maybe. <laughs> uh, let's see. Come on, puppy. You can do it. Oh, maybe I, I can't do that. Uh, at any rate, uh, as I was trying earlier, uh, I was able to get uh, this to work OK. So here's a, maybe a new program.c. Uh, and I'll type stuff here, uh, important stuff. Uh, save that. Uh, and then if I drag this over here, remember, yeah, OK. So we can get it over onto the remote machine. There's probably some mechanism that uh, VS Code has uh, to transfer it uh, back and forth on, on that front uh, that perhaps you'll need to work a little bit. Uh, but bear in mind that I now have two copies of this program. So this new program.c over here is important stuff. Uh, if I change this to less important stuff, that changes on the remote machine versus the local machine copy of it, though it's named the same, is completely disconnected uh, from it. And so that change isn't reflected over here. Um, so this can be a convenient way to move files around, so at least in one direction, as far as I know, uh, and a convenient way to access those machines in a familiar GUI setting. 
A couple caveats. Uh, VS Code is a complex beast, and what students have noticed is that uh, they, it oftentimes copies many installation files over as you connect to the CSE lab systems. And this can be a quick way to fill up your disk quota and make it impossible for you to log in. Uh, in addition to that, login problems with this remote uh, editing capability are hard to diagnose because a lot of the SSH terminal messages are hidden behind some barriers on uh, the VS code. So if you encounter problems, I encourage you just use a plain SSH connection and see what's happening there. We'll have a tutorial video on that as well. I hope you learned a few things, and I look forward to seeing you all in computer science classes in the future. Take care until then. A uh, quick addendum to that, uh, through a little bit of experimentation, uh, I figured out when you would want to transfer something from the remote machine to your local machine uh, and see it in the file browser over here on this remotely connected Atlas machine, uh, you need but right click and punch the download option, which will give you uh, the ability to choose where you want to download it to your local machine from the remote machine. Hope that helps everyone and take care.